welcome to the Business Credit and Financing Show. Each week, we talk about the growth strategies that matter most to entrepreneurs. Listen in as we discuss the secrets to getting credit and money to start and grow your business. And enjoy as we talk with seasoned business owners, coaches, and industry leaders on a variety of topics from advertising and marketing to the nuts and bolts of running a highly successful business. And now, to introduce the host of our show, financial expert and award-winning author, Ty Crandall. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our show today. I'm really glad everybody could join us. Today, we have a really cool special guest with us who's going to be diving into some topics that are very near and dear to my heart because this is the things that have helped us grow our business and continue to help us grow and things that I think I wish I would have known a lot more about when I got started and things that if you don't know a lot about, you should. So to, with us today, I brought in a foremost expert on SEO, website design, and, and reputation management, which is Ken Tucker. Now, Ken is the founder of Changescape Web. Um, that You can find him at changescapeweb.com. Com. And a small business marketing and website design agency specializing in comprehensive integrated marketing strategies and campaigns for small and mid sized businesses. Ken specializes in include search engine optimization, website design, and as I mentioned, reputation management, which is becoming increasingly more and more important every day, as well as social media marketing, lead generation, and marketing automation. Now, Ken's a master duct tape marketing certified consultant, which we're going to be talking more about this duct tape marketing as we dive in and an inbound marketing certified professional since 2010, and an SEO for growth consultant with St. Louis SEO for growth.com. Now, Ken's the author of Social Media Marketing for Restaurants and co-author of Reputation Management, Marketing Guide for Small Businesses. Now, this compact guide explains how to create and protect your online reputation, which again, is becoming increasingly, increasingly more and more important for all of us. Now, Ken created and taught one of the first college credit social media marketing classes in the U.S. at St. Charles Community College. He's also taught a course on content management systems, and he serves as co-chair of the St. Charles County Chambers of Commerce Technology Committee. So, Ken, welcome. Thanks for coming in today. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much, Ty. Yeah, I'm excited to have you, man. I'm I, everything you do, I love. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I do too. It's an absolute blast. Yeah, it is, and it's so important for all of us. I mean, when we talk about reputation management and what we do with our websites and SEO and social media, I mean, these are really the foundational elements that I think are just absolutely essential for anybody that's out there in the small business space. Yeah, it sure is anymore, no doubt about that. So how long, uh, what got you started? I mean, how long have you been an entrepreneur for? Well, I started my company back in 2005, actually. And, um, you know, I, I guess just to share a little bit of a lesson learned, I started it maybe not for the best reason. I managed solution business uh, in the IT world, information technology world. And so I'm very accustomed to, you know, thinking about how you solve problems and, and how you put together a solution set and be able to, uh, you know, to be able to do that as efficiently and as effectively as possible. But when I started my company, it was a little bit more information technology focused than marketing focused. And um, I, I came to realize over the course of the next couple of years that my, my real passion was in doing the marketing and working with small businesses. So I love the fact that I started my company, but it was, uh, you know, I, true to my name, I've actually changed the focus of the company probably three or four times. That's great. Well, so what is it you guys really focus on to do now? So we really focus on delivering websites that generate customers. And obviously a very strong part of that is search engine optimization, which is a great top of the funnel strategy. It, it you know broadens the top of your sales funnel and gets more traffic to your website. But you also have to think about how you convert it. And you also sometimes, very frequently, you need to supplement that with some really quality lead generation programs. And marketing automation is really one of the best ways to make life easy for yourself. So that's really what we've been focused on lately. The way I think about search engine optimization, I actually think of it as, you know, it's a multi-headed beast. I mean, you've got your website, you got your keyword research and, you know, the stuff that you do on your website you got to be focused on build, you know, writing content that's getting people interested in coming to your website and sharing that content and linking to it. But you also have to develop a footprint all across the web, you know, in these directory listing sites that um, you know may not be very obvious to people, but they're hugely important to the search engines. And uh, and and then and then using social media to help 
build awareness and interest and likability in, in your in your business and your brand. And then reputation management, which right now for a local business is probably the number one ranking factor, you know, in terms of um, how your business is going to be found online, especially on Google. Yeah, and, and like you said, I mean, it just becomes so important, especially the bigger that Google gets. Now, you've mentioned a lot of things about social media marketing. How do you really define social media marketing? Well, you know, it's interesting. I mean, it's really changed quite a bit, I think. It, you know, it used to be very much that if you just created a lot of really good, interesting content and you built uh, an avid follower base, that you were going to be able to do pretty well. Now, any really solid social media strategy usually has to include a very robust social media advertising strategy. And so it's no longer really, I don't think it's a, it, especially for a business, it's not really a free platform anymore. It's, it's becoming much more pay to play. You know, when I think about social media, I mean, I'm going to include, you know, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, you know, those are the ones that I usually work with quite a bit or, or work with companies on quite a bit. And, you know, they it really, how you choose which one or ones you really want to focus on, I think you have to take a step back and think about, you know, who's your ideal client, where are they naturally spending time, you know, and then figure out what sites make the most sense for you to take advantage of and make your, your time and effort and investment in. You know, in your experience, how powerful is this? I mean, how powerful of, of the type of marketing is this compared to a lot of other methods that may be out there today? Well, I think social media, it's not a silver bullet like a lot of people think. I mean, you know, we ran through a, a phase and I don't know, I think some businesses maybe are still there where they think all they need to do is social media. And, you know, look, if you're a small business, you know, or maybe a specific type of business like, uh, you know, something that's already highly social, you might be able to get away with that. I think, you know, different platforms work a lot better for different businesses. So Pinterest, for example, you know, can be great for, you know, fashion and DIY home projects, recipes, things like that. Facebook is great for a lot of businesses. And it's, you know, I mean, it's the biggest one. It's got the most user base, obviously. It can work for a business to business type of a business. So if I, if I'm a business and, I, and my services, I sell to another business. You can still use Facebook to do that, but it may not be quite as effective as some of the other channels. Twitter's, you know, my personal favorite still. It maybe isn't quite as hot as it used to be, but it's such a powerhouse if you just utilize some of the features. And so, you know, it really depends on the nature of your business. If you're in the entertainment or lifestyle type of a business, like if you're a, a health gym or you're uh, a chiropractor or a beauty spa, you know, or, or a restaurant or places like that, I think Facebook can be fantastic for that type of a business. If you're an attorney, you know, Facebook might be a little bit more of a challenge, especially if you just treat it as a free platform. I think, you know, what, what I'm seeing with a lot of, and, and actually this is across, across the board regardless of the type of business, but, you know, especially for services-oriented businesses, you know, I think you really have to think about supplementing what you're doing on Facebook organically with, with the paid advertising strategy. As an example, if you're going to write a blog post on 10 ways to help you control your, your family finances, uh, you know, and you're a bank bankruptcy attorney or something like that, you can actually post that blog, a link to that blog post on your Facebook page, but then spend a little bit of money to promote it, to get it out in front of the, the right set of eyes on, on Facebook. So you actually would want to go in and build a target audience. And it doesn't take a lot of money to do this, but it's going to dramatically in increase the traffic at, you know, to your website and the visibility of people reading this blog post. So I think when you look at it from that perspective, it's a real powerhouse. And it's still probably you know the cheapest advertising platform that's out there. Yeah, and I, and I like how you point out, I mean, it's not like all of them are right for you, and we found that out in our business, you know, we, we have a Pinterest page, we don't get any traffic on it, because, you know, our demographic is 75% is male, you know, yeah. whereas we've been on other ones like uh, Instagram works really well for us, or Facebook works really well, so I think it's, like you said, it just makes a ton of sense, based on the industry you're in, you have to really understand your demographics, you need to understand the demographics of the different platforms, and go with them, Snapchat's the biggest thing out there, but that's not our demographic, it's 
a younger da- demographic than what our typical client is, which is why we don't really do anything on Snapchat. So, yeah, I think you make a great point. There's a lot of good ones out there. It just kind of depends on who your target market is. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, for example, Snapchat is really intriguing, as you said. I mean, it's, you know, it's a very hot platform, but not everybody across all age ranges is, are, are going to be on it. We're working with, uh, you know, a local orthodontist right now that, uh, you know, to build out a, a Snapchat strategy because they have a lot of, you know, kids and young adults that come in there for braces and, uh, you know, they, they spend a lot of time there. And so it's like even just setting up a filter so that when they're posting a snap, they have a little bit of a branding opportunity. And, you know, they can be really playful with a platform like that. That's going to work really well for them. But if you're, like I said, if you're a bankruptcy attorney, I don't know the Snapchats. <laughs> Maybe, but I, I I don't see it typically. Sure, yeah, I think, like you said, it just makes a ton of sense. You know, even though it is getting a l- little bit more expensive because some of these things, especially Facebook, you know, like you said, you used to be able to put a, something on, a, on a, a, a company page and everybody that followed you see it. Now you have to pay to boost it to the same people that follow your page. So, but, you know, for people that are looking to bootstrap their business, why do you think that this kind of marketing is just so effective? Well, I think it's... Um, you know, we all have our own network of people that, in a community that we can reach out to and, and, and actually help us become champions of, of our businesses. And social media is absolutely king for that. I mean, it, it's the best way to go out there. You, you know, if you, if you just think about a strategy a little bit and you create content and you focus on, you know, reaching out. I mean, sometimes even the best way to build a following for the short term on uh, social media is to go an offline route. So if you're a brick and mortar business, you know, uh, let's, let's just use a, you know, a a clothing boutique, Uh, make it really easy for people to like your, your Facebook page while they're in their store. So don't just make them say, Hey, like us on Facebook. I'm a big fan of saying, give them the URL of how they can go find exactly you on Facebook. And, and, you know, I think, that's, a, that's something that I think a lot of businesses really miss is the handshake from the offline to the online. Really, really powerful. And if you're spending money to actually have a physical place of business that people are coming into, you need to be using that to promote your business in every way possible and to take advantage of that and stay top of mind. You know, and, and since so many people are active on social media, you know, that's the thing that they're going to be checking out 24 seven, they may not be anywhere near your business most of the day, but they'll always be close to your business if they're on social media. Sure. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. And here's my question though. I mean, can it work as a a, a sole form of marketing? I mean, is that a a smart strategy for people to find the three, four, five top social media for the demographic and do that as strictly their main way of getting customers? Well, I, I guess it depends on what the business wants to accomplish. So, you know, if um, if you're uh, again, if it's something that's already naturally social, I think you have a better chance to pull that off. So, if you're starting a CrossFit gym, uh, you can go very guerrilla with a social media strategy, and that's probably going to carry you a very long way. So, for a business like that, yeah, it's probably very doable. Uh, and and you don't need to have a massive number of customers. You just need to have maybe twenty really avid customers to get your your business launched and and really start rocking and rolling with that. If your goal is to become a multi-million dollar business, you know, and you offer a different kind of service that's not as social, then, you know, I think um, social media is a very important ingredient, but it's, it, it, you really have to think about building a total online presence from that perspective. It's not going to replace search engine optimization. You know, right now, you know, I think one of the absolute most important things, as a matter of fact, I think the most important thing for every local business, every small business, is to create a Google My Business page. If they do business in a local geography, that is the most important page. And you want to you want to fill that out as completely as possible. You want to get people to go write reviews on your Google page. And that's going to help you rank on the Google Map result. And, you know, now that we're transitioning to where we are well past where more than 50% of all searches are being done on a mobile device, being found on that map result is absolutely huge. And, and being found because of the phone's GPS, 
you know, you don't even have to say a near me, you know, Mexican restaurant near me. You don't even have to say that anymore. You just say Mexican restaurant. Your phone's going to be smart enough to say, to tell Google, hey, here's where you're at. Give me the search results around, you know, where close to where my, you know, I'm at physically right now. And so I, I think it, I would say the one thing that I would really strongly encourage people to do is start with Google My Business and then think about incorporating a, a really strong social media component. So do you think Google My Business is more effective on the local side than, you know, companies that deal more on a, on a national basis? Oh, absolutely. So uh, absolutely. It, it's, it, it, I mean, it, you know, the, the value of a Google My Business page is really to get you to show up on that Google Map result. Yeah, and, and that's really, it sounds like, even more appealing on the local side than it is to do on the national side. Yeah, it, it's never going to hurt a national focused business, but because it's always good to have a property on Google. And if Google's going to give you one for free, by all means, take advantage of it. But is it going to be a difference maker for your business? Not really. Okay, well, well, what about, you know, when we talk about locally, you know, when it comes to social marketing, do you find that it's better local or on a national or does not really matter? You know, I think it's, uh, again, it depends on the nature of the business and, and what, you know, what the business does. I, I think it can work great for both. You know, you've got some very large brands that are just incredibly successful on social media and they've had a very strong presence all along. They got it early, they adopted it early, they built massive followings, and they continue, you know, to get a lot of uh, engagement. And, you know, at the end of the day, when you're looking about at, at social media, it's not about how many people follow you, it's about how engaged your followers are with you. You can build a huge audience, that doesn't necessarily increase your visibility. Especially, well, now on Facebook, on Twitter, it's a different story, but on Facebook, you could have, you know, 1,500 people liking your Facebook page. The reality is when you post something from that page, you're going to get, you know, a single digit percentage of those people who have liked your page actually seeing your post or having a chance to see your post. So I think it really depends on the nature of the business. Again, if you're in the, you know, if you're in entertainment or very much a lifestyle oriented business, uh, you know, social media is going to work great, great for both national or local focused businesses. If you're business to, to business oriented business where you're, you sell services to another business, a platform like Facebook may not be the strongest one. You know, you might need to look at LinkedIn. Uh, I think Twitter could be a, a really great platform as well. So, I, I mean, it's kind of hard to make a, a general statement about that. Sure. And I think that make, that makes sense. It really depends on all those variables. What kind of industry you are in, you know, how big of a following you may have, how natural you are to social media. But I, I like what you said. I think it's so true. It's not about the number of followers you have. It's about the engagement. And I think that's a lot of where people struggle is to actually get their, their followers engaged with them more. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And I think it's, you know, we're, I, I'm starting to see – a shift in, in a lot of the local businesses that I work with that, you know, unless you're posting something that's very community oriented or event driven, uh, you really, you're really not getting much visibility and engagement there unless it's a sale or a promotion or, or something like that. You know, I mean, you do have the ability to tag people. You don't want to overutilize that. That's, that's kind of the social media equivalent of spamming, I think, but there is a time and a place to do it strategically to help increase reach. And when I think about social media, uh, I, I think a lot of people, they get seduced by the most obvious statistic that you can see immediate results for, which is usually some kind of growth pattern in your social media. And, you know, I, I think it's really important to look at, not you know, the, the size of your audience on social, but also you want to take a look at the applause. Are they liking the content that you're sharing out there? Likes can be done you know, on Facebook or Twitter or, in, or Instagram, et cetera. But that's the softest form of engagement. So it's an acknowledgement, yeah, this is cool, we like this, but it's not really engaging, not really deeply engaging. That's what happens when people are commenting or sharing your content. And as a marketer, it doesn't get any better than when somebody else is sharing your content, or even better yet, you've got users that are generating content talking about your business. 
So, you know, that's why one of the things I love about Facebook, if you're a brick and mortar business, I mean, do everything you can to encourage people to check in when they come into your place of business. I'm a big fan of maybe doing that through rolling out some kind of a social good program, you know, where whenever people check in, uh, you know, for every person that checks in, maybe you, you know, you make a contribution to a, a local charity or a national charity or whatever. Do anything you can to get people to, to talk about your business online. If you're a restaurant, make it super easy for them to take a picture of a great dish that you just put down in front of them and encourage them to take a picture of it and share it on Facebook because that is expanding your reach tremendously. I mean, you're reaching their friends, most of whom don't even know that you exist and certainly don't like your Facebook business page. So user-generated content is absolutely the way to go. And that's, I think that's the important thing as you're getting started you know, as a small business or a new business with, with social media marketing is how can you get your, your fans to become the brand advocates? I like that. And, you know, I've seen some businesses do this really well where they even have an area of the restaurant that has something really cool that, uh, you know, they kind of use it as a social media staging station where people walk in there and they want to go take, you know, a picture by a big bullhead or something like that. Um, And it's a great promotional idea because everybody's in there taking pictures, sharing it on social media. Yeah, selfie stations. Yeah, those are all great ideas. And those are starting to pop up more and more for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, what about local? What are some other strategies that you found effective for, for local businesses? So for local businesses, I think, um, you know, the, the number one thing is really going to be getting strong, quality, consistent stream of online reviews. What we recommend is that you create a review funnel where you make it super easy for people to go write a review on the review sites that are most important for your business. I think that those review sites, you know, I mean, if you're a local business, Google is number one. Facebook is an important local review site. You know, there are maybe an industry-specific review site that's going to help you rank. When you do a Google search for, you know, like uh, best hotel or best Mexican restaurant in a particular area, frequently what you're going to see is you might see some ads at the top. You're going to see some Google Map results. When you scroll down and you start to look at the organic results, meaning things that people aren't paying for or are not being shown on the map, you frequently see a top 10 list. And so it's really important. You know, those top 10 lists are coming from sites like Thumbtack or Home Advisor if you're in the home services business or Yelp or TripAdvisor if you're in, you know, a restaurant you know, or or certainly TripAdvisor if if you're a hotel or bed and breakfast. So, you know, you really want to think about where you want to drive people to go write reviews. What we like to do is with this review funnel, you can actually set it up so that when people click on on the star rating that they want to give you, if, if they aren't going to give you a stellar review, pop up a window and get some feedback first. And say, hey, what, what can we have done to, you know, your feedback is really important. How can we have made things better? And, and, and turn that into an email instead of having the client go write a review. But, you know, the other important thing about reviews is you really do want to respond to every review, even the negative reviews. And I know there's a lot of trepidation out there for people that they don't want to respond to a negative review. And look, I get it. And I think that you should be very, very cautious about how you do respond. Because, uh, you know, maybe somebody had a bad day, but, you know, maybe you, maybe you screwed up as a, as a business, you know. I'm not in a situation to really make those calls, but I think it's, um, you know, you can always just say, hey, look, we're sorry you didn't have a fantastic experience. You know, your feedback is important to us. Please contact us at this phone number or this email address, and then take that conversation offline and turn it into a customer service opportunity. It's so much easier to get somebody who's already been a customer to come back and, and buy from you again than it is to acquire a new customer typically. So take advantage of that. The other thing is, you know, I I read a statistic the other day that said that um, when you respond to reviews, you can get an overall composite rating bump of maybe a quarter of a point. So if the average review scale is five stars on Google, you know, you might be able to get a little bit of extra credit, if you will, if you're responding to every review that comes in. The other thing that's important to think about with reviews 
is uh, what we refer to as review velocity. You know, if you went out and did a great job and got a bunch of reviews for your business two years ago on Google, that's fantastic. That's great. But Google wants to see that people are continuing to talk about your business in a very positive way. And if you don't have that constant stream of reviews, it's pretty easy to, you know, to kind of fall out of interest in terms of, um, you know, what people think about when they're talking about your business locally. So it's the number of reviews, it's, it's the average rating of the reviews, it's the, uh, you know, the recency of the reviews, all of this stuff really matters. And to make that happen really well for most businesses, you have to have a process and you have to have some tools in place. Yeah, that's, uh, that's awesome. And what about, you know, you talked about offline marketing strategy. What is, you know, what's a combination? I mean, what do you find is the most effective online and offline marketing strategy that kind of is a combination together? Yeah, well, I I mean, I think you you kind of talk about something already. You know, for example, when you walk into a restaurant and they have some really cool figure in the restaurant or, you know, some kind of a, uh, a head mounted onto a wall that where people want to stop and take a picture, you're using your physical space, that's offline, to get people to do something that's very socially online. So so that's great. Signage in your buildings, you know, printing, um, you know, your, you know, a, 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 re, a request for somebody to go write a review on the sales ticket. You know, there are so many things that you can do. I'm sure you've probably been to several restaurants where, you know, the table tents that they have on the, on, you know, on the, re- on the table, uh, they actually, like at, like at Denny's, I noticed the other day, they have, uh, you know, the snap code that you can use if you want to post a picture, uh, you know, with, uh, with Snapchat, then, uh, you know, they make it easy for you to integrate and to follow Denny's, you know, on Snapchat. So take advantage of your physical space. And if the physical space has so much power from a branding perspective, Use it and, and use it as a way to lead people to a, online strategies. You know, another great offline strategy is doing a direct mail campaign or even every door direct mail if you're, you know, if you can sell to an entire mail route. And, you know, that mailer that goes to somebody, you know, if you're going to have a call to action on that mailer, you want them to call you or do something, get them onto an online property. Give them a reason to come to a web page. Give them a reason to go to a social media site and engage with you there. Because, that, you know, when you do that, now you have ways that you can start to measure and track and stay in touch with people. And so I, I see a lot of people missing that opportunity. They'll send, you know, they'll send a, a direct mail campaign. They may send three mailers to a household, but they never did anything to try to get anybody online. And I, I think that's a huge mistake. I think it's a really big missed opportunity. Yeah, and I I agree. I I see that as a missed opportunity as well. I mean, you've really, I like this idea and this concept of forming online and offline, you know, using these offline strategies you mentioned to push people online. I think it's a brilliant way to to kind of mend mend the two together. Is that what you're referring to? I mean, you, so you're the duct tape marketer. I love that. What do you mean by that? I mean, how does duct tape marketing really work? So duct tape marketing was started by John Jansch. He wrote a best-selling book, you know, more than 10 years ago, Uh, and it's a small business marketing book. And the thing that I love about it is uh, I come from, you know, early in my career, I worked on very large software development projects, and I managed, you know, a team of 40 software developers. And when you develop software for the Department of Defense or for NASA, you know, where the core function of the software is maybe, you know, if it fails, people can die. You have to have good systems and good processes in place, and they need to be repeatable and managed and and optimized. And so when I made the transition to being an online marketer back in 2008, where I really kind of completely shifted my business business to that focus, you know, for the first several years, I, I was really kind of looking for what's the equivalent in the marketing world for what I came from in the software development world where we had the capability maturity model. And when I came across duct tape marketing, you know, the light bulb went on in my head and it's like, Oh my gosh, this is what I've been looking for. This is a marketing system. You know, we've got this concept called the marketing hourglass. That's a really foundational component of it. And it's just a different way to think about the sales funnel. 
your marketing hourglass has seven stages to this. So it's no like, trust, try, buy, repeat, and refer. And so, you know, it's kind of like, uh, instead of a, a funnel, it's more like an hourglass. And so you've got the top half of the funnel, you know, you start by building awareness and likability and, and people starting to trust you. Those are all critical before they're ready to start buying from you. Sometimes they need to experience what it's like to work with your business in something that's a pretty low risk opportunity, you know, for them. So that's where a try type of an offer. We all see this all the time online. When you have an opportunity to download a white paper to read up on the seven, you know, the seven most important social media sites you should be using it for your business today, you know, that you you might trade it, an email address to get an ebook that's going to help you with a roadmap of how you can utilize the you know the social media channels for yourself. That's a try opportunity. It, they didn't even have to pay for that at all. And and so you know once they do that, then if their experience continues to be good, they're going to be more likely to buy from you. Once they buy from you, how can you get them to repeat purchasing from you and then certainly refer you? And so I, I love that concept. I think it's absolutely brilliant. It's a really easy way to get your head around it. It's a, it helps you think about, okay, if I'm trying to just get the word out to let me, people know about my business, how do I do that? What kinds of platforms, what kinds of messages uh, do I need to be using to do that? That, that might be different than you know, when you know somebody's really starting to get to the point where they're ready to make a buying decision. There, you might need to provide them with less information about why they should like you and your business and more why should they really choose, you know, choose your product or your solution over a competitor. The very, very different messaging. Yeah, it sounds like different messaging. You know, we talked a lot about marketing and you're also a website guru too. So, you know, what are a few things that you think every great website should have? Well, I think every website should have a very, very, very clear message. When somebody goes to the homepage of a website or a landing page that you're driving people to, they need to be able to know immediately what is it that you do. And, and if, they, if, if they can't recognize that, you know, within a five or ten second time span, you know, the, there's so many distractions online and there's so many other competitors out there that are so easy to find that they may just move on to the next search result. So I think that's really, really important. And I think it's also critically important to have a really strong, clear call to action. What is it that you want somebody to do? When they go to your website, if they go there and they're looking for a kitchen remodeling, make it really obvious and very, very easy for them to ask for a free estimate. Or if they're not ready to ask for that free estimate, give them an opportunity to download a guide on how you can make your kitchen child friendly or something like that but you know make it really easy don't have too many calls to action but have a very clear call to action i think home pages are becoming long and scrolling home pages they should be mobile optimized absolutely you should be implementing an ssl certificate on your website now but that's security and that's going to become more and more important and it's certainly a search ranking factor but it's also being flagged on your website now when you're visiting a website as a, as a consumer and somebody doesn't have what we refer to as HTTPS at the beginning of the URL, then Google's actually flagging that saying, hey, this website may not be secure. So you want to eliminate those barriers when you're thinking about website design, but, but it's, you, you really have to also think about conversion, clarity of communication, make it really easy for people to understand what you do and how they can engage with your business. What about SEO, SEM? I mean, when you say you have the website set up and it looks good, it has a clear call to action, as you say. It has a clear messaging, as you say. What's the key with the SEO, SEM to really, you know, a lot of people don't even know what those are. So I guess let's start there. And then, you know, how can those be used to be able to get a site with a clear message, clear call to action out there on Google so more people see it? Yeah. Okay. So SEM stands for search engine marketing, and that's a paid advertising strategy, you know, on, on Google or Bing, for example. And there are different kinds of ads that you can do. You can do a search driven ad where people type in a phrase, you know, and they're doing a search for that. Or you can do a display ad where you, you go on a particular website and because of, uh, you know, a, a website that you visited or 
you know, a, a previous search phrase that you did, uh, an ad's going to be delivered as a, as, a, as a display ad. So that's, um, I think that's a, a critical component to making your website visible. A lot of those paid ad strategies, I think it's really important to think about those good intention-focused keyword phrases. So if you type in a phrase, uh, something like uh, Mexican restaurant near me or Mexican restaurant St. Louis, Missouri, uh, you know, there's a pretty strong intention that you're looking for a place to go eat and you're going to be making a buying decision in a, in a relatively quick manner. So they're, uh, the, where, where the intention is very strong, you know, I think you're going to have a pretty good opportunity for that keyword to generate some positive activity. You know, the thing that's the downside for me on a paid advertising, paid advertising strategy to get your visibility on, uh, you know, Google or Bing is that a lot of people recognize that they are ads and so they don't click on them because they don't want to click on an ad. They want to, they, they actually trust an organic search result more. And so, uh, you know, statistics range from anywhere from 10 to 25 percent, only 10 to 25 percent of all searchers are going to click on a paid ad. So it's the best way to guarantee that you're going to be found for a particular search phrase. It's an immediate thing. I mean, you can start launching an ad campaign, and within days, you can be displayed at the very top of uh, Google or Bing because you are willing to pay for that ad to be there. When you do search engine optimization or SEO, that's what we refer to also as organic, an organic strategy, where you're not paying the, the search engines you know, per click or per display every time somebody puts in a search phrase. You're actually making an investment in your website, and it's an investment because it doesn't, it doesn't go away. Every web page that you create gives you an opportunity to optimize that web page for a keyword phrase and it gives you a piece of content that somebody might find to be really interesting and helpful that they want to link to as a reference. And every one of those links is many little validations in the eyes of the search engine. It's a testimonial. This website thinks that the content on this page of this website is important and valuable enough that they're willing to point people to it. And so it's a huge trust factor to the search engines. So an SEO strategy, you've got to, you've got to focus on you know, what are the right keyword phrases that you want to be found for? We have this concept called long tail uh, keyword phrase, which is really just, uh, you know, more than a one or a two or even a three word phrase. And, and, you know, we're now getting to the point where a lot of people are actually typing in questions into the search box. And so the entire question actually could be considered to be a keyword phrase. And so if you happen to write a blog post that has the best match of that keyword phrase, you you might you know you might be able to rank for that pretty effectively. There are hundreds of factors, obviously, that go into search engine optimization. I think you know it's the best long term strategy for a business that um, you know where if the economics make sense. I mean, you know, let's face it, SEO is not for everybody. I mean, because it, it, it's too expensive for a lot of businesses. If your average transaction is is um, very small and you don't get very many customers that repeatedly buy from you at that same transaction price level, you may be hard to justify making an investment to make your website rank number one for the organic search results. That's not to say that you don't want to think about SEO. This idea of local SEO, if you're a local business, then there are some very localized tactics that can make it a lot easier and a lot cheaper for you to do. We talked about one earlier and that's Google My Business. I mean, that's the number one local SEO play that coupled with the, you know, with Google reviews. So, but, you know, search engine optimization, uh, I mean, you've got to look at the websites that are linking to your website, the quality of those sites, the number of those sites. Are, are there any spammy links that people are trying to build to link to your website because those can be problematic? Has anything broken on your website? You know, all of these things, you know, the search engines look at, any of them fail, it erodes confidence in the search engines uh, it, it, about the accuracy and, and, and uh, authority of the content and the structure of your website, and so it's going to hurt your search rankings. The other thing that's really important to do right now is uh, is to utilize uh, schema markup, 
this is, you know, make sure that the data is in a format that is super easy for the search engines to crawl. One, one good way for a, a lay person to understand what this can do for you is if you do a Google search and you, you type in a search phrase that's a question, a lot of times you get that little knowledge box that pops up in the search result that actually has the answer to the question that you typed in. Yeah, I've noticed that recently. That, and then you click one and they keep giving you more questions that potentially people have. Yeah, so those are built with what we refer to as rich snippets. And you only get those rich snippets if you're structuring the, your page correctly in a way that's easy for the search engines to crawl. There's a, you know, a couple of different formats for that, but the one that you know, we usually talk about is, uh, is schema.org. And, and so there, there's a markup that you can do as you create each and every page. You know, you, I, I strongly recommend that you, you write the content on that page with a focus keyword phrase in mind that's, you know, going to be a three, four, five or longer word keyword, keyword phrase. Make sure you're doing the things to reinforce that throughout that page and utilize that keyword concept. But then take advantage of implementing the uh, schema.org markup for that, especially for, there, there are different tools that help you do this. There are plugins for WordPress that make this very easy to do. There are um, uh, actually publishing platforms that make it easy for you to create a menu, publish the, that uh, with good schema markup so that it, it'll actually be pulled onto your Google My Business page, but also directly in, into the uh, search result for your website, Google's starting to trend to the point where you're going to actually start to see less clicks through to your website because Google's starting to display more information in that search result. If you do a search for, you know, certain restaurants, I, I think like Denny's or Panera Bread, for example, you actually get their menu in the search result and you don't even click through to their website to be able to see their menu. It's right there in the Google search result page. Right. Yeah. Well, Ken, listen, I, I appreciate you. I, I appreciate you coming on. I wish we had more time because there's so many things that you're experiencing, and I'll probably bring you back for another okay. show because we didn't really talk about reputation management. We didn't really get a chance to talk more about SEO and what's on the websites. We spent a lot of a lot of time talking about marketing, which I think is very valuable to everybody. But there's so many topics that you're an expert in that I think everybody could benefit from. So uh, I'll reach out to you. Let's get you back on the show at a later date if uh, if you'd be willing to come back on. That'd be fantastic. I'd love to do that. I, I really enjoy talking about this stuff. Um, I make a big investment in my own personal uh, knowledge and, and, and training and education. That it's you know it's it's my job, but it's also my hobby and, and my passion. So I, I'd love to do that. Well, I will. Uh, where can everybody go to get more information, learn about you guys, and um, you know be able to dive in deeper and just you know we scratch the surface of your knowledge but I know there's a lot more that we could share so what, where's the best place to drive people to, to, to go to to learn more well our website's changeshapeweb.com so that's C-H-A-N-G-E S-C-A-P-E W-E-B dot com and you can find us on most social media at changeshape so facebook.com forward slash changeshape or on uh, twitter for example at, at changeshape is our Twitter handle. That's perfect. Well, I uh, really, again, I really appreciate you coming on and so openly sharing with us today. Well, thanks so much. I really enjoyed it. You take care, Ty. All right. And thanks, everybody, for listening. Make sure, and I will go ahead and I will, and can say that website one more time so everybody hears it. Okay. It's www.changescapeweb.com. Okay. So changescapeweb.com. I'm going to put that in the show resources page. So make sure everybody that you're visiting the site, because this is where you can get even more information. Like I said, we just scratched the service. They have so much cool stuff. I love the images. I love the way uh, that their site flows. Their blog is, it, they have a lot of different articles and things on there you can access. So make sure that you visit the website to get some more information. And we can, we will bring you back on in a later time. So Again, everybody, thanks for tuning in today. A very special thanks to Ken for joining us today. And make sure that you go to changescapeweb.com, and I will make sure that's in the show resources page. Thanks, everybody. You've been listening to the Business Credit and Financing Show with your host, Ty Crandall. Watch for our next episode to get even more insight on financing and growing your business. And don't forget to check us out online at creditsuite.com for even more business growth strategies.